Welcome to Akasha TV, the second episode. You guys loved the first episode from all the feedback we got, so here we are doing it all again. We're going to tell you what's going on in the brewery, what's happening out in the industry, and of course, we've got a special guest. So welcome to Liam from the Welcome Hotel. It's good to be we here, mate. Thank you. It's uh, really nice to have you here. Thank you. I'm really loving this brewery slash nursery setup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the full vibe of Nothing it. Nothing but the best for you, mate, you, that's mate. for sure. So, um, as I said, we had, a, we had a great first episode, great feedback on that. So thank you everybody for, uh, for giving us um, some ideas and, and things we could do a little bit better. We've got a nice little set going here and a few more cameras, but um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoy this episode as well. Um, don't forget, you'll find us on Facebook. Um, we've also got our YouTube channel, which you can um, go and have a look at um, episode one if you missed that one, um, or uh, today's episode and um, um, up, upcoming episodes as well. So, let's get on with it. If you don't have a beer in your hand, get one. We're drinking The Shape of Hops to Come. Uh, released a couple of days ago. Uh, ran out very quickly online, and um, but uh, jump on our online store and you can, uh, sorry, onto our website and you can see where it actually is for sale. Um, what do you think, Len? Do you like this one? It's good gear, isn't it? Well, I think it's all right. Yeah, <laughs> everything's good. It's got the, uh, all the things you'd come to expect of a, a Kasha branded IPA. Nice. Quality is the thing that comes to mind. Yeah, lots of hops. Lots of hops. Always a good place <laughs> to start. Um, all right, so let's let's talk a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into beer? I'm Liam. I'm the Welcome Hotel. Beautiful branding. As we all know. Hey, I got into beer the same as everyone else because I couldn't really do anything else. So naturally, <laughs> you fall into drinking too. We much all got to fill into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, the, where my obsession with beer came from is probably the only interesting story of my life. I was mm -hmm. working in a pub in London. Everyone does their London trip. I drank exclusively Carling, Foster's. I ate sausage rolls. So, sorry, Foster's? Foster's. Is that Australian beer? Yeah, <laughs> I've never heard of it. Never seen it here anyway. <laughs> and the pub I was working in, um, on my own standard sort of weekday afternoon, gentleman comes in, big yellow upturned moustache, <laughs> too much alcohol, too many cigarettes, big red nose, and asks for um, some of our car scale. And I'm Car scale and politely told me, he's like, Oh, look, you know, the beer's not that great, you're not keeping it that well. I drink a lot of youngs, and you know, kid, I don't care, mate, like, drink the beer <laughs> Take yeah, it exactly. because I really knew what I was talking about. <laughs> and he told me, He's like, Look, I work at Young's Brewery, um, I'm one of the assistant brewers there. I think, I think he'd probably been a brewer there for a long time, judging by his whole makeup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> then, tell, yeah, yeah, he'd been around, been around one or two schooners. And um, he said, come and visit me in the brewery one day in your own time. Here's my card, make a call, come along. I thought, sure, I'll get to see a brewery, drink some beers. And he showed me through the brewery, showed me what it was about. Um, Young's Brewery, like we said just before, is super old brewery. Yeah. Um, and like, I learned the difference in beer, effectively. What good beer is, how beer is made, what it means. And credit to this guy, because he could have just said, this guy's a dickhead. Mm. Like some Australian kid, but he, he, he probably his, started like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he took his time and he <laughs> said, "Look, I'll sh I'll just show you, and you can form your own opinion based off that." But from that moment, I don't think I really turned back. You know, I spent lots of effort going out to other pubs which had really good beer, visiting other breweries, and that's where it came from. So, in answer to your question, nice. it started with me being a bit of a dick. Yeah, yeah. It usually <laughs> does for most of us, do, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Young's double chocolate stat was one of my one of beer I had early in my beer drinking it's a career. Cracker. I yeah. like Did you have it over there? Yeah, special was my go-to, and then once a year St George. Yeah, nice. Loved St George. I think it was six percent, which was hectic. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot back then. What did we up to? Six and a half mid strength. Yeah. For us, it is. For us, it is. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite style of beer these days? It's situational. Right now, this is my favourite beer because uh, I'm drinking it and I'm with you. <laughs> There's a like, beer in front of you. I and love, I love it. your beers. We know that. Thank you. Um, I drink a lot of lager. I think, uh, like I said, I, if I go back, if I name the, like, I'll give you the names of the beers that mean the most to me. Young Special. Mm -hmm. uh, your first IPA, which I won't name. Uh, then the third one. It's a lager, so I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> it's Would I be disappointed? Or? <laughs> it's, 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 that beer, it's that beer you have at the end of a golf game. It's that beer you have, which is it doesn't really mean much. It's a one-night stand beer. Isn't it nice sometimes to have a beer that you don't have to think about? 
It is. And I think that's where those sort of beers come in. I think, you know, I, I'm drinking this beer and I'm, you know, I'm focused talking to you on the camera, but there's a, there's a part of me that's thinking about the hop profile, thinking about the hops in there, yeah. you know, could this be a little bit of this, could it be a little bit of that? Oh, it's really good. Um, sometimes you just want a beer where you're really not just focusing on what you're doing and not really thinking about the beer at all. It's for effect. Yeah, yeah. But you don't want it to taste like garbage water either. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, you think about it again, don't you? It's like, yeah. whoa, that's bloody terrible. Mate, that's what no one's, I think, poor old lager. You go, you'll be at a golf club after and you go, I'll have that. And it's just, <laughs> it's terrible. And it's disappointing. Is that all I really want is something clean and easy. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I, I look, I love a lager as well. Um, and I think, look, most people will admit they like a lager. Some mm. people, you know, wouldn't like to admit it in public. But, um, and, you know, on a hot summer's day, again, sporting. You know, we've, we've been to quite a few sporting games together. And, um, you know, it's about the sport. It's about being with your mates. It's not so much about the beers. You just want something nice and easy. Yeah, correct. I totally agree with you. Let's talk about the pub a little bit. Um, the Welcome Hotel for me is is definitely one of my been one of my favourite places to go for a beer for for a long time. Thanks, um, much. And you know, it's a it it's for me it's a place that it feels like you're at home. You feel comfortable. Um, you got mates there. Um, it's not pretentious. It's, it's 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 great beer, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be there. So all these really cool things that I certainly I look for anyway in in a place where again I don't have to think too much about it. I can enjoy the beer and and you know talk to mates, talk to you. Um, then it kind of all hit the wall a couple of months ago. Didn't it? I couldn't go there. Your, none of your customers could come and see you. I went there. It didn't, you went. It didn't end well. <laughs> so tell, tell, I guess, you know, just tell us a little bit how, the, how it's been. I mean, obviously not good, but I'd love to hear your opinion on, on how you've how you fared over the last couple of months. Well, mate, I've been through the, I've been through the full range of emotions. So there was the shock, the angst, confusion, hmm. lots of thirst. <laughs> I, think, I think there's been a lot of yep. there's been a lot of thirst. Um, oh yeah. Trying to it happens. It's happened quickly, right? I feel like how long has it been? Three months, nearly. Best part of three months. Oh, good. It's 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 two months, I think. But um, it's well, well. I guess it all sort of started. You're exactly right. Sorry, three months ago and about two months ago when we stopped. Yeah, we had to close the doors to most places. But it's just been quick. Like the, it was. Between you, me, and the doorpost, quite emotional to start with, mm. because yeah, there's, there's nobody listening. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, of course, to, yeah. I have to call all my staff and say, there's no jobs, mm. there's no pub for the until this sort of all plays out. Mm. Um, the pub, as much as you know, I'll love it one day, hate it the next. It's a big chunk of my life. Yep. So I was sitting there at home, twiddling my thumbs. Mm. Uh, and then the uncertainty, there's a, the stress of going, how do I pay for this, 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 and this? Lots of uncomfortable phone calls. I had one with you um, saying, mate, there's, look, I will pay you. Mm. I don't know when it's going to, I really don't know when it's going to be. It's going to be in two months when we open, three months when we open, it could be September, October. Yeah, well, we've, had, we've had plenty, as a brewery, we've had plenty of conversations with, with venue owners and customers. And, and, and I think most people, the, the, way, the best way to play is just be honest, you know. And we we mm. said to a lot of our customers, look, we totally understand that you're not going to be able to to meet some of um, meet some of those requirements, and that's totally okay. Just let us know how you're going. Let us know what's happening. How we can help. All that kind of stuff. Just just be honest. And um, a perfect example of that. It's like, yeah, no problem. Well, I'm here, so obviously the relationship. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it's right. Okay. You said exactly I'm the right thing. Beer for free. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and I guess. Before the crisis, talking a little bit about more more happy times when mm -hmm. when the pub was full and um, you know there's there's customers. What 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 were people drinking? What were uh, what were people leaning towards the most? What styles of beer? Definitely hazies. Definitely hazies. There you go. Like the still doing it now. We're doing it right now. <laughs> um, uh, Dom at the pub has all the input into what goes on tap. Yep, we know him well. I'll, I'll generally say. You need to, you're going too much this way, too much that way, but really steering the ship from a distance. Yep. Uh, and hazy IPAs, all I know is that they go on tap, they're off tap a day, two days later. Yeah. So really popular size. Sours, um, we're not really in the season for it right now, are we? But sours... But you've, all, you've always got a couple going on the taps there, haven't you? Yeah, so, definitely. As, as Nipah or whatever, but... Um, but like of, of all the beers on tap, I feel like pales become the new lager, so that... That's a mainstay. Yep. But IPA, kegs, Akasha kegs, you know, 
they fly. Excellent. And we'll, we will have our dedicated beer drinkers. They'll try a few things and then they'll get back to their, they'll go, they'll know Mosaic's on tap or Hopsmith's on tap. Yep. And they'll go, right, now I'm back to this. Yep. And I'll drink that until Liam says I've had too many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll say, no, you're good. Have more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No, that's, I, th- I think that's a pretty common answer. I think we, you know, we're often out there asking people what, you know, what they're drinking. We're asking venues what people are drinking and certainly hazies and sours have been, they've been sort of, at that peak for a little while now. I but think, I mean, the yeah. fact that we're even talking about a beer style or trend transitioning within a year, mm. like what, eight years, and what year are we? 2020. <laughs> ten, ten years ago, there was one style of beer on tap and yep. Hoopers. Yep. And that's it. Regularly, like on, in through most venues. So It was almost 10 years ago when I tried to you know, convince people to drink double IPA. Oh, yeah. It's quite a challenge. Was that, was that film here? No, picked it. Yeah, yeah. Film, film, yeah, film yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it was about eight, eight years ago, I think, that beer festival was. The uh, Winter Beer Fest in Thirlmere. I remember that. What so an amazing well. festival. Who was there? There was you. There was uh, the Bale Boys were there. Yeah, Rox was there. Rox was there. Uh, Two Birds was oh, there. Oh, yeah, Daniel was there. Yep. Oh, I can't even remember. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was, to this day, still one of my favourite beer festivals. It was my first, I mean, it was my first as a, as a vendor, and it was, it was kind of exciting, but it was such a cool festival. What was your beer that sold out that day? It was, uh, well, I was going to say Hopsmith then, but it would have been um, the IPA. Yeah, no, right. it was just a normal IPA. Yeah, because yeah. everyone was so. going, drink it, drink it, drink it. And I had to leave our little stall and <laughs> run down there to get it. It was gone. We, we, we won Brewery of the uh, Festival as well now mm-hmm. in our debut. So. And still winning awards. Oh, every now and then. Every now and then. <laughs> All right, so nothing about me. Enough about me. Um, so I guess just one, one last question. Uh, well, uh, two questions. What does the future hold for the hotel now? I mean, you, do you see things um, going straight back to where they were? Do you see them, you know, a little bit of what we're, we're now, so you opened last weekend. Mm. Uh, was it last weekend? I yeah, think you opened for, for 10 people and you were saying it went quite well. People were excited, um, drinking plenty of beer. Um, do you, you know, do we see ourselves in six months' time, everything going back to the way it was or somewhere in between? What do you, what do you reckon? I'm literally looking a week ahead. So <laughs> now, now we know on Sunday we're going to 50 people. Yep. So I have to plan for that and I'll say, are we going to open, mo- we've been closed Monday, Tuesday, that was the plan with having 10 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we keep doing that? What works out? I have to look at the business first, obviously, to say, what can we support? Do I, can I bring on more staff? The, like, it's like starting a business again. You go, what can I afford to do and how much money am I going to make and how much yep. can we expand? The other thing is, is that we have these outside um, uh, stakeholders, like which is the government now, that say you can and can't do I this. mean, they've always had, had a hold on particularly pub owners and, yeah. and brewery owners and, and things, but it's, it's, it's a whole new aspect. Yeah, correct. To add into the mix. And it's changing every week. Some of those other rules that we used to we used to follow, um, not so much RSA, but more around growl, you know, pubs filling mm. growlers. So a lot of that's been really loosened up during this period. So I, definitely, are they going to? You know, is that going to be pulled tight again straight? At, you know, when things sort of get a little bit more relaxed or great for pubs. I don't know how that impacts breweries. I mean, the beer still comes from here, so no problem at all for us. Yeah, no problem at all for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I think I can't see how. There was someone actually talking about it, saying a lot of these restrictions lifted. Everyone has to stay at home, so you know, alcohol violence, mm. all these sort of social issues surrounding alcohol. Yeah. They're saying they don't exist. It's probably because everyone has to stay at home. But can we not try going? Look, let's just leave it. Mm. With a lot of these restrictions lifted. Just give people a chance. See what happens because it's really good for businesses to have that flexibility in what they do. Yeah, um, and they'll find their own model that works for them. But if there's a, you know, just loosening those reins a little bit. If there was two days a week where I could say, look, I don't have to, and if that meant reduced trading hours, doesn't matter. I don't have to serve food with alcohol. Mm. That'd be huge. I could, because then I could be open for that trade. But I don't have to worry about giving my ship, my kitchen days off. I don't have to worry about paying for people to be there when they might necess- they might just be standing there twiddling their thumbs because yeah. no one's really eating. Um, look, there's a lot to come. It's going to change. Yeah. Massively, I think we've had a bit of we've got a clean slate to work with as an industry as a whole. Everyone needs to get together uh, in their different groups. It's tough. You're a brewery. There's small bars. There's small restaurants. There's pubs. Uh, there's clubs. Um, there's the mega venues. Mm. Uh, everyone has their own situation which they're trying to deal with. 
So not one body is going to look after it. It'll be up to the government to decide best how they're going to reintroduce people into the economy. But the positive take is that we have opportunity to, to do something different. Yeah, I think, absolutely. You know, I think people have been positive and they've been receptive to us saying, you can eat here, drink here, do this. I think mostly because people are just desperate to get into yeah, I think public. There's, there's, there's rules that we have to have, but I think people, uh, again, we had this conversation earlier today, but I think people are, um, if, we, if we'd said to people, you need to book, you need to come in at this time, um, you can have, you know, you've got to pre-book, you've got to pre-order your meal. People will go, oh, I'm not going to bother, get out of here. Um, but now they're so excited, yeah. you know, because they can get out of the house and get into a pub, get into a brewery, whatever it might be. So, signing times. We hope so, mate. Yeah, I hope so. so as well. We're all still here, so that's a good thing. All right, let's move on. Um, one of the things um, that we like to do is taste one of our beers. Um, we've kind of already tasted one, but... Um, last week uh, we tasted uh, the uh, one of our single hop IPAs, and we wanted to come back to one of um, Akash's single hop IPAs, um, one of the first that we made. Um, we've always been a believer that um, single hop IPAs are a great way for if you're a home brewer to, to get to know hops, but even as a as a professional brewery, um, it's a really great way of introducing a single hop to the customer, even to our own brewers and to our staff what that hop is like, what it tastes like, what its bitterness is like, how it dry hops, and it really gives you a good idea of how that hop works and how then how it might work with other hops in, in more complex IPAs. So we've always been a big fan. We release every year um, a bunch of single hops. Mosaic was one of the first, and it was absolutely huge. Um, let's grab one rather than talk about it. I'm doing it. <laughs> it's just sweating waiting for me. Exactly. So Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why? Mosaic. Why? Why is this the one? Well, this is the this for me. This is like the the popular single hop. Or when if I say to a customer and I go, Mosaic. Oh, Mosaic. People love the Mosaic. Mm, they do. And and what I was going to say was, yeah, we we try the single hops, and when we did Mosaic, everybody loved it. And it was almost mm. one of those universal hops that, you know, if we did a Centennial hop, which is a, a bit of a polarizing hop, you've got um, more people like me, like being, I know you don't like the word beer nerd, we spoke about this earlier. What was the word I should be using? They're watching. They're watching. <laughs> well, I said I'm a beer nerd, but yeah, we're just... who would love a Centennial Hop, which is a more traditional, what we call a sea hop out of the States. Um, you, know, you get some people who would love it and some people that wouldn't mm. actually love it. Mosaic, everybody seems to love. Um, hey, for me, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's everything that like in, in the new world hops that people love with those big tropical flavors. I mean, they're jumping out of the glass. Mm on the palate, on the, uh, on the nose as well. Um, but I think it's, it's got a level of complexity as well. So um, as, even though it is a single hop, um, it has this, this depth and complexity to it that um, is, is as good, if not better, than some quite you know, complex IPAs with three or four hops in them. It just really is able to stand on its own and do a great job. Um, as I said, it's not, we think that, but every time we brew it, it sells out. It's a US hop, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, we're about. It's pretty that. safe. It's pretty safe sure with us. We're about ninety-five percent US on, so it's pretty pretty safe to say. Um, so yeah, for us, it's 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 a real. It's one of our favourite beers. It's a great seller. Um, one of, um, some of our customers would would have uh, would have known we had a, um, a, a May Growler Madness weekend um, a couple of weekends ago, and because we had such a we had um, our, unfortunately our pub customers weren't able to serve kegs, so we had a we had too many, so we wanted to make sure that our customers were able to drink them fresh. Um, so we did half price growlers all weekend. The biggest seller was Mosaic. People were just, you know, just loved this beer. Um, we've got our, our best seller um, is Hopsmith in the brewery here. Um, we sell that, that's the most we sell of, particularly Still in Still more than Mosaic? Yeah, um, so Mosaic kind of sits there. We've got usually Hopsmith, Freshwater, and then Mosaic just sitting behind and threatening it. Uh, I think it's only been a, a, a cool beer for a year or two now. So. Um, but really is a universal hop, and, and not just for us. We, you know, there's other single hop uh, mosaic IPAs out there are usually pretty popular. So one we love, um, by all means. Um, we've, just, uh, we've just sold out of it here at the brewery. It'll be back in stock next week. Um, but uh, jump on our, on our website, and um, there's a beer finder there on the front page. Um, track down some of our stores, and um, if you can find some of this, grab it. Tell us what you think. Hopefully you'll love it as well.
It's good gear. Another question for you. West Coast or East Coast? Or West uh, Coast or Hazy? So Mosaic is a West Coast, is a tradi- more of a traditional West Coast IPA. We were drinking uh, Hazy or New England or, or East IPA. Is that even a thing though, the East Coast? Is that East Coast thing? in the old days used to, uh, used to be more of a maltier IPA, less hoppy, maltier sort of IPA, but I think East Coast, we're, that's really Hazy or, or West Coast these days. So you know that I spend frequent holidays in the States when I can. Mm-hmm. And whenever I'm on the East, East Coast, and I'll say, oh, Hazy East Coast or New England IPA, mm. What are you smoking, man? It's like, what, <laughs> what does that even mean? It's like, yeah, it's from here. Yeah. Uh, is it just an IPA? In terms, I reckon so. Yeah. Is it champagne? <laughs> is it champagne? I That's think exactly if you're right. saying, I prefer the West Coast style. I think that I like a bitter, that West Coast style IPA. Yeah. Is, is the answer to the question, without trying to sound like an idiot and talking about. What I it's what you like. Don't know. It's what is, I like. Is what you like. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, for our, for us, the West Coast is is a uh, more more bitterness, mm. um, not uh, not a bit more of a I guess a, a bite to it. Uh, obviously, we we spend a lot of time with the with the hazies, making that sort of big mouthfeel, pillowy mouthfeel, very very low bitterness. Uh, whereas the West Coast um, uses a touch more alcohol, uh, a bit more crisp, and more bitterness. Must yeah, where I prefer mine. Whether I'm old school or not, who knows? But just the way I like it as but well. But West Coast is where this American IPA started, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And West Coast sort of was guilty of going a little bit too far there for a little while. Um, before the, the Maybe that was the, the impetus behind the hazy was there was that West Coast, the big West Coast was so bitter. Um, probably Super went a little bit too far there too, for a little while. So yeah, you can make a high alcohol uh, IPA and still be drinkable. That's true. Right? Correct. <laughs> All right, let's move things along. So um, what I wanted to do was talk a little bit. Um, we always try and let you know what's, what's happening here at the brewery. It's been, as we've, we've just spoken about um, earlier, is it's, it's been a bit of a tough period. But luckily for us, we do spend a lot of our time canning our beer, um, always close to the canning line, whether it's running or not. Um, so, you know, we've, uh, we've been busy, which is great. Um, we mentioned last week our nationwide delivery is now available so um, if you live outside of the state and looking for some of our beer um, by all means have a hunt around for one of our retailers on the website but you can always um, if all else fails jump on the website and we can get we can deliver to you as well um, Sydney Metro delivery still going that's been uh, that's been good for us we've got more and more people coming to the brewery now which is great um, we've got a big announcement. I've been told I'm not allowed to tell you just yet, but uh, we'll have a big announcement uh, uh, regarding some more interstate availability of our beer coming up soon. So um, a bit of a teaser. Um, we'll let you know uh, next episode exactly where that is. Uh, we've got a new brewer's box uh, out next, uh, uh, leading into the long weekend. Um, so look out for that one. The brewer's box, for those that don't know, um, is a mix of some of our favourites like the Mosaic, but also some of our newer newer beers as well in a, in a nice little mixed case um, that you can buy online. So keep an eye out for that. They literally last a couple of hours, so uh, keep an eye on socials and we'll, uh, we'll blast that out for you as well. We mentioned a competition that we'll be launching this week. Now the competition that we're launching is, uh, it's called Brewer for a Day. Um, so it's the opportunity for uh, one of our customers to um, come into the brewery help us brew a beer um, on our pilot system here. You can obviously, we can have a chat about what type of beer you'd like to brew, brew the beer, uh, and then a few weeks later actually come in and we'll be canning the beer as well. You can take a case home, um, have it on tap here. Pretty exciting stuff. So, um, you know, just go under a shooting or something, or, you know, maybe you can enter if you like. What you'll need to do though, is uh, just shoot an email to beer at akashabrewing.com.au um, with the title Brewer for a Day and tell us in 100 words or less uh, why you should be uh, the brewer for a day. Um, exciting stuff, really good opportunity, so looking forward to seeing some of those entries. Alrighty. One of the things we also do, Liam, is uh, a couple of audience questions. Um, always been pretty good so far. I haven't had any curly ones yet, but <laughs> lucky it's not live. So we yeah. do pre-record this show. Um, but. Uh, We've got one question from Roger. Will you bring back the Sabro IPA? I didn't get a chance to try it and heard it was awesome. I am too, one of the people who didn't get to try it. Did you, Nick? Oh, it did, did show out very quickly. The Sabro IPA, again, it's the latest of our single hops. 
Um, very, very unique hot. We tasted it on uh, episode one of Akasha TV, so if you didn't get a chance to, uh, to see that, um, have a look at the episode and we'll go through, that. We go through that in a fair bit of detail. But really interesting hop, newer hop out of the States. Um, yeah, it's got some of those tropical uh, and fruit, citrusy driven flavours that you would normally get out of American hop. But then it's got this coconut and mint and cream. Oh. And it doesn't sound that good, does it, now like that I say fine it? Fine limey or? It's amazing. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing. We completely fell in love with it. Customers fell in love with it. Um, we sold out so quickly um, that we're going to brew it again. So, yeah, happy days indeed. So, uh, we're literally brewing that next week. So, we should see that in about a month's time. Keep an eye out for that one. Of course, we'll let you know on socials when it's available. But if you did miss it, um, give it a go. If you didn't miss it, then I'm sure you'll be buying some because everybody loved it. I'll be in the queue. Excellent. All right, I might keep you can. How's that sound? Thanks, mate. Excellent. All right, second question from Sam. Loved the first episode of Akasha TV. I've got a fan. Yes. How good is that? Uh, con oh, congrats to the team, um, and I, I really do, uh, I must uh, thank uh, Bryce, who you can't see, who's uh, behind the camera right now, and, uh, and Katie and Grace and the rest of the team um, who helped do this, you know, I don't look this good naturally. Of course. Yeah. So, love the first episode, congrats to the team. Do you see hazy IPAs as the future, or just a fad? What do we just What say? do you reckon? You re fad. They're here to say, aren't they? Well, they'll be here. Or is it just IPAs? Is it just... I, I, hey, look, did, we we all said IPAs happen. would come and go. I never but said But they, they've branched into... No. <laughs> you know what I mean. But I they've branched into other categories now, so... Maybe hazy IPA will be its own. It'll be filtered, unfiltered... Well, they are unfiltered by yeah, nature. West Coast, hazy... I don't know. I think it's here to stay. You reckon? Yep. Let's do it. I think it's been around for long enough now. Um, the question will be, and, and you mentioned the States, I think in the States now, we're seeing, it, they don't even call it hazy anymore, they just call it an IPA. Mm. And you drink it, oh, oh look, it's a bit low on bitterness, it's hazy, yeah, it's a hazy IPA, whatever. The brewer doesn't really care. So I think, I think the lines are already starting to merge a little bit. We're starting to see a little bit more bitterness in some of the hazies. We're starting to see the West Coast bitterness back off. I think they're all starting to become one and, you know, a, one a big pool of IPAs. So, um, are they becoming yes and no, as I used my answer. Are they becoming regional? Are they becoming regional? Like champagne? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you, you travel to the east coast of the states, they're everywhere. West coast, they're still everywhere, but maybe not as much. They're sort of interspersed with, with Well, there's still coast. English IPA, isn't there? There is English. Don't see much of that around anymore. No. I think the, east, you know, the old East Coast IPAs were that sort of English type, you know, much maltier, uh, slightly less hoppy and bitter. And what's IPAs. Australian IPA? Is that the challenge? Other than... A well, I think Australian IPA for me, again, there's not really, I'm not sure if there's an actual style, but it's, a, it's a, 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 usually a West Coast style IPA using Australian hops. That's the same as an Australian pale. I was going to see that in the, in the same sort of vein. Do we prefer lower alcohol IPAs, you reckon? Are you talking about me or as a country? As a country, as I a customer. Certainly we see less alcohol um, in IPAs here. Yeah. Um, personally, I think that's more about the excise. So um, right. the excise system here, let's not, we won't go too far into this today, but more alcohol, more excise, more expensive the beer. In the States, there's more of a, more of a flat level. So uh, more alcohol doesn't necessarily mean as much cost as it does here. So you tend to see higher, higher alcohol levels over there than here. So you're definitely lower here. Um, I quite like, I think I talk often about balance in an IPA includes alcohol. So, you know, you've got the hops, um, you know, the sweetness, the, the, the hop bitterness, and then the alcohol, almost a triangle of balance that you've really got to get right. And it's really tough with a lower alcohol IPA. It's easy to get wrong, I suppose. Yeah, mm. absolutely. All right. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you. It's been fun. Very much for coming down and spending some time with us. Um, really happy to see the pub open again. Congratulations. Thank you, Matt. We're all still here. Um, I'll be down there soon. You will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look forward to it. Um, and thank you all for listening to the show um, for the second time, hopefully, some of you. Um, this week, we're going to give you that exclusive code again. Uh, you may remember, for those who saw, saw the first episode, um, you can get 5% off in the online store um, this weekend. Uh, using the code AkashaTV5. So uh, go for it. Um, buy something online. 
Um, remember to sub subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can catch us on there or Facebook. Um, and questions, um, we want lots of questions for the next episode. So shoot through any of those questions through to beer at akashabrewing.com.au and don't forget the competition, Brewer for a Day as well. Looking forward to seeing those answers. Thank you, goodbye, have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.